Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now I know I say this every single week but I promise you you are in for an absolute treat with this week's offering. In fact make sure you are strapped into your seats, you're sitting comfortably and there's no sharp objects around that you can bang your head on because this is going to absolutely knock you out. Multiple choice starter questions. Now, anybody who knows me will know I'm a little bit obsessed with multiple choice questions, specifically diagnostic multiple choice questions. And this resource has them in spades. Um, it has been created by P. Bruce Maths, and it's, the, I mean, it's a big claim, a multiple choice question linked to every objective of the new GCSE syllabus. Right, get ready for this. So it's a PowerPoint, and if you download it, it looks like this. Now, the first thing I like straight away is this isn't just a random collection of questions. It is structured. So you have got the six main areas of the GCSE, and if you click on those, they're hyperlinked, and it takes you to a relevant kind of section heading. So if we were to have clicked on number, it would take us to this. And here are all your number objectives, and if you click on one of these, it takes you to the relevant question. Now, if you've never used uh, diagnostic multiple choice questions, you, uh, you've never lived because they're flipping brilliant. I personally would use these as a, a starter. Well, I'll talk more about the kind of specific uses towards the end, but imagine uh, you use that as a starter of the lesson. Um, a couple of ways of using it. Um, some people like to get out electronic voting devices. I'm not a massive fan of that. Some people like mini whiteboards. Uh, kids write on A, B, C, D, and they can do the working and hold up their answer. I, again, I'm not a huge fan of that because I think sometimes it's a bit of a faff giving out the whiteboards and, and sometimes kids aren't writing A, B, C, D on there. They're writing all the stuff that perhaps isn't as conducive to learning. Um, I'm a bigger fan of just fingers. One finger for A, two for B, three for C, four for D. Um, but there's nothing wrong, of course, with, with mini whiteboards, kids doing working out in books and so on. But the idea is you bang this up on the board, give the kids a bit of thinking time. They then vote either with the fingers or the mini whiteboards. Uh, you have a look round, see all the responses. Um, I then tend to get kids to explain why they've chosen it. So why did you choose A? Why did you choose B? Why did you choose C? Why did you choose D? Then have a class revote and a discussion if need be. And within the space of say two minutes, you've revised the key concept, had a great discussion, exposed any misconceptions and so on. It's flipping brilliant. But the problem is trying to find these quality questions and I've, I've built a website full of them, but to, to have these here, really, really nicely set out, really kind of uniform uh, presentation of them, really, really, really high quality questions, you're absolutely laughing with these. So they cover the entire GCSE uh, syllabus. So the question is, how do we make the best use of these? Um, well, I outlined one thing there, which was a starter. I think that's probably the, the main use of this, but in a very specific way. Um, I'm a great fan of space learning and the spacing effect. Um, so what I tend to do, especially with year 11s um, in the build up to GCSE, is I'd like to get into a regular habit of using these. I, I ask my year 11s three diagnostic questions every single lesson, every single day, and these are a wonderful source of this. But I won't be choosing three from number. I'll be mixing it up a little bit. So let's have one from number, one from probability, one from geometry. Let's bang it up there. Let's see what they can recall. Let's see what they can retrieve from long-term memory. Let's see what misconceptions are still lingering there. Let's have that whole class discussion tick off the three topics that I've done, or perhaps um, a good way of doing this is make a complete copy of this PowerPoint. And every time you use a question and it's answered successfully, delete the slide and it's kind of whittling it down because, whoa, there are 194 of these slides in there. And you can say to the kids, it's kind of a race to zero. By the time we get that to zero, it means that we've uh, done every single question in class and I'm satisfied that you've answered it correctly and you understand it. And if a particular question leads to leads to confusion, for example, this one here on lower bounds, um, inequality notation, if that's causing problems, then have that discussion, but then don't delete it and then just it'll come up in another week or two weeks or whatever. So it's just absolutely wonderful. And the quality of questions, and look, you've got all the new stuff in there. You've got all your iterations, so some of them you're gonna kids are gonna need calculators and all that kind of stuff. But well, I'll tell you what, if if I if I come across a better resource than this in 2018, is it's probably the, been the best year ever for Tez Resources because these are flipping absolutely out of this world. So as I say, it's completely up to you how you use these. I'm a fan of using them as starters. They work well as ho as homeworks or low stakes quizzes as well. But the bottom line is just get using these because they are flipping brilliant. So hop back on here. I mean, that, that at the time of recording, that is criminal. 603 downloads for one of the best resources I've ever seen in my life. Get on here, get it downloaded, get um, get uh, sharing your, your thoughts if you love it. And I will return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.